Hello everyone, this is the first chapter summary for Edexcel's A2 statistics and here we'll be going through chapter 1 which is regression, correlation and hypothesis testing. Okay, so first of all let's look at our objectives for this chapter. Our first objective is to understand exponential models in bivariate data, that just means data of two variables. And our second objective is to use a change of variable to estimate coefficients in an exponential model. Our third is to understand and calculate the PMCC. And finally, we should be able to carry out a hypothesis test for zero correlation. And then finally, to finish off, we'll look at an exam question, which um, covers all of these topics. So first of all, what forms can exponential models take in bivariate data? So you should be familiar with these two forms of exponential models. So y is equal to a x to the power of n, and then y equals k b to the power of x. And in this chapter, we should be able to use a change of variable to estimate these coefficients a, n, k, and b. So essentially what the change of variable means here is that we should be able to code these two exponential equations into a linear equation where capital Y is equal to log of Y and capital X is equal to log of X. And we can do this by taking logs of both sides of both these equations here. So here we have log of Y is equal to log of a x to the power of n and using our laws of logarithms we have log of y is equal to um, log of a plus log of x to the power of n using our product rule and then we can simplify that further by bringing the power of n down so we have n log of x and now we can notice that if we swap log y and log x for capital y and capital x we have capital y is equal to log of a plus um, n x and we can notice that this is now linear with um, y intercept log of a and the gradient n and we can do the same for the other equation here so we have log of y is equal to log of k b to the power of x and applying the same laws of logarithms to both sides we get here log of k plus log b to the power of x bringing the power of x down we have x log b and once again this is a linear equation but this time notice that we have log of y but x remains the same so what the change of variable allow us to do is to see some data that doesn't fit a linear model but still shows a clear exponential pattern. If we take logs of both sides we can see that the log graph, so for example if we have a graph with um, log of y on the y-axis and log of x on the x-axis for y equals ax to the power of n, we can see this will still give us a straight line. Whereas if we had y and x on the axes, like this, our graph would look something more like that. And the next part of the chapter concerns the product moment correlation coefficient, which is a value between minus 1 and 1, and we write as r. And if r is equal to 1, that shows perfect linear positive correlation. And if we have r is equal to minus 1, this is perfect linear negative correlation. And for values of r close to zero, we can say that there is no correlation. 
although there may still be a non-linear relationship between the variables, as we saw with the previous exponential models. Now, in the exam, you'll be expected to be able to calculate the PMCC from your calculator. And to do that, on your class with calculator, you can go to menu and then press 6 for statistics. So menu, then 6 for statistics. And that will open a menu where you then select um, 2 to get your um, y equals a plus bx, your linear model. And then you'll get a table which you can input your data into. And once you've inputted your data, you can press option, the option button on your calculator. And then from there, you can press 4 to get your regression calculations. And that will bring up a menu which looks something like this. So y equals a plus bx. And then it tells you the value of a, the value of b, and also the value of r. And this is the value you are looking for the PMCC of your inputted data. And you should also be able to carry out hypothesis tests with the PMCC. And you should be able to carry out one-tailed tests and two-tailed tests. So for your one-tailed test, your um, null hypothesis will be that rho, the population PMCC, is equal to zero. And that is the same for the two-tailed test. And the um, alternative hypothesis for the one-tailed one test will be either that rho is greater than zero or rho is less than zero, depending on whether you're testing for a positive or negative correlation. And for the two-tailed test, it's simply that rho is not equal to zero, and you're testing for either positive or negative correlation. And obviously for a two-tailed test, we need to remember to halve the significance level given in the question. Okay. Now to find the critical value for the test, you look at your significance level from your test in the column headings, and then also your sample size, which will be given in the question, in the um, row headings here. So for example, if we had a 5% significance level and we were looking at a sample size of um, 7, then we look in the 7 row and the 5% significance level, so 0 0.05, and we can see that the value we get is 0 0.6694. So the critical value will be 0.6694. So let's say you're testing for positive correlation. So you have the null hypothesis that there is no correlation and the alternative hypothesis that there is correlation and it's positive. And let's say the um, PMCC for the population given in the question is 0.7123. Then you can see that the 0.7123 is greater than 0.6694, the critical value. So it's more extreme. So we've crossed the boundary given by the critical value. So there is enough evidence to reject H0 because the value that we observed from the population is big enough to suggest that the um, correlation is positive. So we can conclude that there is sufficient evidence at the 5% level that there is positive correlation. And now if we were testing for negative correlation and the value in the question was minus 0 0.07123, then what we can see is that minus 0 0.7123 is less than, so closer to minus one, the minus 0.6694. And so we reject H0 because this is extreme enough, close enough to, to minus one, that it suggests that there is negative correlation. So this time we can conclude that there is sufficient evidence at the 5% level that there is negative correlation between the two variables, between the two variables in the question.
and you have to make sure that this conclusion is based on the context of the question. That is very important. And to finish off, we have an exam question from June 2018. Um, Tessa owns a small clothes shop in a seaside town. She records the weekly sales figures, W pounds, and the average weekly temperature, T degrees Celsius, for eight weeks during the summer. The PMCC for these data is minus 0.915. And part A asks us to state our hypotheses clearly and use a 5% level of significance to test whether or not the correlation between sales figures and average weekly temperature is negative. And then we're asked to suggest a possible reason for this correlation. So our null hypothesis is going to be there is no correlation, so rho is equal to zero. And our alternative hypothesis will be that rho is less than zero to test for negative correlation. And our significance level here is um, 5%. And our sample size is eight because the data was recorded for eight weeks. Okay, now looking at our table, so we have 8 down in this bottom row here, and we have the 5% significance level here, so our critical value is 0.6215. So our critical value is 0.6215. And we can clearly see that uh, minus 0.915 is more extreme, so is, is is more extreme or closer to minus one than um, not minus 0.6215. So we can reject H0, and we can conclude that there is sufficient evidence at the five percent level. To suggest that um, that the sales figures and average weekly temperature are negatively correlated, and for part B, we're asked to suggest a possible reason for the correlation. So what the negative correlation shows is that as um, average weekly temperatures increase, the sales figures for the closed shop will decrease. And what we can say is, as the temperatures increase, perhaps less people will be um, in shops and instead on the beach. And for part C, Tesla suggests that a linear regression model could be used to model these data. State giving a reason whether or not the correlation coefficient is consistent with Tesla's suggestion. So the, um, the correlation coefficient is minus 0.915. And this is extremely close to minus 1. So this suggests a linear regression model is highly likely to be suitable. Okay. And for our last two parts, part D, state given the reason which variable would be the explanatory variable so here we can say that um, t is the explanatory variable as um, w the sales is likely dependent on the temperature as we explained in part B. And finally, for part E, 
Test calculated the linear regression equation as W equals 10,755 minus 171T. And we're asked to give an interpretation of the gradient in of this regression equation. So the gradient minus 171 represents the change in Y over the change in X. So what this shows is that for each change of 1 in the X direction, Y changes by minus 171. And in our case, the Y is our W and the X is our T. So what we can say is for each rise in temperature, so rise in T by one degree, the weekly sales figure W um, decreases by 171 pounds. And that is the end of the chapter summary for chapter one of Edexcel's A2 statistics. I hope you enjoyed and you found this useful. I hope to see you for the review of chapter two.